Welcome back to Wasteland 2. We've just finished up at the Ag Center. The next place that we need to go for the main quest is to the prison. But before going there, I want to head west and then north up to the Ranger Citadel to sell my stuff and see if there's any new cool things I can buy. So let's start moving. Well, that was quick. Oh god, it's a pack of infected animals. So they're already spreading out from the Ag Center. The infection. Alright, let's take them on. Oh, 12 hit points? Oh, these things are so weak. Way weaker than the things that I actually faced at the Ag Center. Yeah, I'm not going to waste ammo on these things. I'm just going to use melee in my pistol. Uh, where's your pistol? Oh, I had you throw a grenade. That's right. It, it unloaded her sniper rifle? Well, whatever. No big deal. And this is unloaded too. Wonderful. Spread out a little bit. Ambush. And you guys can run away. Are they coming for us? Oh yeah, they're going to. Or not? <laughs> Maybe they're not. They don't seem to be moving. Alright. If they're not going to move to me, then I'm going to move to them. <laughs> Damn, the thing could jump. Out of range. Okay, let's try this. Oh wow. Angel actually leveled up from that. Copy Echo One. Congratulations. Now, what was I going to give you for skills? I think it was hard ass, right? Yeah, weaponsmithing Helen has outdoorsmen I don't really care about. Yeah, it's too hard ass. Where's the exit of this place? There it is. Echo, this is Ranger Citadel. Come in. Over. Go ahead. 10-4 Echo-1. It looks like that plague of plant growth might not have been confined to Ag Center after all. I got a call from Marjorie at Stubbins Farm, who said giant vegetables were taking over her fields. Head over there right away. 
we got to nip this plague in the bud, uh, so to speak. You copy? <laughs> copy. 10-4, Echo-1. Sending you the coordinates now. Ranger Citadel out. Well, what do you know? It's along the way. Perfect. Wonder if I'm gonna come across any carnivorous strawberries. Using a scale carries risk of critical failure, which can lead. Oh, okay, bye. I think I just heard a cow. Hmm. Hopefully the cows aren't infected. This place looks like a jungle. As you get close to the farm, the dry wasteland scrub gives way to lush green plant life, and you can hear the distant buzzing of insects. That's probably a bad sign. Better look for the irrigation tank and pour in the serum. Okay, I think the cows are spooked. Oh no, if I explode these dudes next to the cows, the cows are going to explode. Okay, don't worry cows, I got your backs. I got your udders. These things are going to wreck the ecosystem if we don't stop them. Yep. Alright. Ooh, that's the tank, isn't it? Yep, I think so. Welp, let's start fighting them from here. Let's get two sniper shots off on this. Hold on, how much ammo does Vulture's Cry have? Five. Nah, eh, good enough for now. Spooking the cows. You'll be fine, don't worry. Excellent. Didn't even get a chance to move. Zumpf. Oh, these are the super weak superflies. They're not the infected superflies, they're just normal superflies. Well, if they're not very super, then wouldn't they just be flies? Hmm. One must wonder. Ah, <sighs> Harper. <laughs> Shotgun is not the weapon to use here. I could try to beat it with a board, but... Ooh. Oh yeah, the cow is just out of range. Yeah, you know what? I'll take it. one hit point. I feel like the game, like, has some sort of an algorithm that makes it very likely that enemies will be left at one hit point, just to annoy you. Three of them. Four of them! Alright, two of them are super far off, though. What the- holy shit! That was a damn good shot! Nice. Not the one I would have wanted to shoot at, but nonetheless, that was impressive. Hmm. I guess I'll just shoot this. Eh, his aim's being affected. I probably should have moved first. Oh well. Okay, cool. Fifty-one percent chance. Let's go ahead and move two, so we don't have the aim penalty. Now I can shoot twice. Much better chance to hit. God, that's doing 
so bad damage. I really need new weapons. That's why I'm heading to the Ranger Citadel. To hopefully buy some new ones. Her aim is affected. Okay, just uh, watch your shot here, Harper. You should be able to shoot right in between your teammates. Okay, don't hit Yulia, don't hit Theodore. Come on, I believe in you. I no longer believe in you. Yeah, it's a safe shot. Oh god, please don't trigger and then like, blow up the cow. Okay, no. Oh no, if I try to hit the infected pod person, I might hit the cow. Friendly fire. It is utterly too dangerous. It's alright, I can move 2 AP to... Here. Yeah, that should be... F yeah, clear shot. That is not such a clear shot. Uh, don't hit Angela in the head, please. You can hit her in the elbow, that's fine. Just not in the head. Mm, if I hit it, it might blow up. Mm, probably not. This weapon does 17 to 21 damage. Please, cow. Please don't blow up the cow. Please don't blow up the cow. Alright, I don't want to shoot it right now. And if I ambush... It's probably going to blow up too close to it anyway, so I'm actually... going to just move you over a little bit, and I'm just going to leave you. Yeah, I'm just going to leave him. I need to wait for it to come closer. good distance. Should be far enough away from the cow. Thank god they have so few movement points. Okay, cow's fine. Damn it. Gotta reload. Alright, let's take a shot with the midnight special. Never mind. Let's ambush with the midnight special. Oh, damn it, now the cow's in the way. Or is it? Uh, I think it's a straight shot. It should be fine. Just ambush with her. What? See, once again, one hit point. <sighs> Oh, you need to reload. One out of eight shots. <laughs> Weapon jam. God damn it, Theodore. I should probably reload. Yeah, let's do it. Just out of range. It's alright, get a shot in as soon as it takes a step forwards. One more shot left in her. Alright, this thing might... Eh, no, it's not going to die when when the ambush from uh, Yulia comes on. It's not going to do enough damage. Can't do anything. Uh, might as well move you a little bit further away, I guess. 
you can't do anything. Yep, shotgun ambush. Ooh. Hmm. I think it's far enough away from the cow. Alright, it's not worth using my sniper rifle on this one, but let's use it on this one. Take a little shot at this. This midnight special is awesome. Alright, you're certainly gonna die now. In fact, if I moved here, I could probably hit both, but uh, it's not worth it because I don't want to get close to these things. Oh, for the love of God. Get back. No! It was too close. I'm so sorry. I thought it was far enough away. It wasn't. Crap, she's out of ammo. You are completely useless, unless I want you to try to punch it. Which would be incredibly stupid. Alright, um, it is bleeding. So... Probably gonna take damage and just die since it only has one hit point. Oh god, he's out of ammo. Eh, I'll use my midnight special on it. There we go. Oh, the cow went to the corpse of the other cow. They were probably friends. I'm sorry, I tried. I tried. Okay, ammo is in a very dire situation. I'll give three shots to her. And I know that Harper needs some more assault rifle ammo. You've got 20. You've got none. Oh my god, I really need ammo. I really, really need ammo. 7 to you. 76 to you. Aww. I'm gonna take the cow's udders. That's gross and weird. Oh wow, they actually show up like they're enemies. Like, I just click on them and shoot them. Yeah, how much shotgun ammo do I have? Got quite a bit. 30 shells. Pour the sermon to the intake valve? Yes. Pour the sermon to the reservoir and hear the pumps start to flush it through the system. Alright, resolve it, right? Or not. Was it this? Oh yeah, here we go. So it's for that. Radio calls about the spreading infection. All inhabitants have already been infected. Yes. Something under this ear dirt. Ah, thank God.
So what about the owner of the farm? Was he one of the infected people? I, or I guess all the infected people probably were the owner and the workers, I guess. That's what I think about it. Oh, that is a beautiful sight. A head wrap? That's an interesting name for a hat. This is apparently a head wrap. Make sure there's nothing else to pick up. No buildings I can go into. No. Nope. Alright, time to go. Ooh, we have a level up. Copy, Echo One. Echo One, congratulate. Theodore. Once again, not going to focus on your combat skills. Hmm. Kiss ass? No, I was going to do field medic, right? That does increase the amount you heal, right? <clears throat> uh, it doesn't actually specify, does it? Allows more items to be used and improves the benefits received from using them. Okay, it does, yeah. A bonus to amount healed. Yes, yeah, so let's put some points into that. Hmm. Spend some more in field medic, maybe? Or surgeon? I haven't had to actually use surgeon so far. I'm not sure how much it really matters. I'm just going to save my points for now. Maybe use them in leadership or kiss ass. So let's see how much it actually does heal now. 21 to 32. How much did it do before? Wasn't it like 20 to 30? 21 to 32. It's not much. Alright, what the hell. Let's spend the rest in Field Medic. 21 to 32, let's see what it goes to. 22 to 34. That really doesn't make it heal much more. Eh. I don't know if it's really worth spending that much in the Field Medic skill. Pass over here to the left, although on the map it's almost like it's scrubbed out, like this is impassable. I wonder if that's a radiation cloud marked on the map. Let's go take a look since we're here. Seems fine. I don't see any radiation. Yeah, I guess these marks don't mean that it's impassable. <laughs> this is a very efficient way to travel. Raiders. Eh. I've been getting XP and stuff, but they're so easy. Oh, you actually gain XP for that. Cool. Alright, finally back to the Citadel. I don't believe I have entrance to it yet, do I? But regardless, I can always purchase some stuff from outside of the Citadel. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Vargas would have told me if I had gained entrance to the Citadel. But wait. Aberforth? I thought I left you at the store. Aberforth. 
Did you find her dowry? Or did you just go home because you, you felt hungry? Whoa. Can't stop the chat. Team Echo, Team Abel's always got a job to do. I love it when a plan comes together. Plan? I know you said you can't stop the chat, but do you want to stop the chat? No? Alright. Well, now that I have Vulture's Cry, let's see what this puppy can do. Whoa, a critical success. What the hell's a critical success? <laughs> it just said puppies. Puppies! Vulture's Cry now benefits from Puppies Effect. Plus one to Charisma. Nothing inspires confidence like a cute dog at your heels. That is not a fucking cute dog! <laughs> that ain't no corgi. Oh my god. That's the image for every single dog in the entire game, isn't it? <laughs> fucking rabid Resident Evil dog. No, you can stay. Let's get another one. Hmm, I'm guessing this one would have given me the puppy's effect too, but it probably doesn't stack, because it doesn't look like it did anything. <laughs> okay, y you can stay. Uh. <laughs> Does anyone notice what these NPCs are doing when I move? Look at their heads. Look at where they're looking. Uh, are they all on an acid trip or something? They're like, whoa, man, what? Oh, what are you, where are you going? <laughs> they look drunk. <laughs> All right. Ah, there's the woman with the weird name that sells stuff. Solvig Sephors. What kind of a name is that? Solvig Sephors. Norwegian? Swedish? I have no idea. Stuck up our water here. If you'd get out of the way. There we go. Alright. Welcome back, kids. How's the mission going? Well, apparently I can't answer. Let's trade. Alright. Uh, ooh, there's a lot of stuff here. Okay, so I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff and take a look at what's in the store, see if I want to buy anything, and... Well, I'm going to cut that out because it's probably not going to be very interesting to watch. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've taken a good look at what she has to sell, and I've sold a bunch of my own stuff as well. I broke apart a bunch of weapons trying to find special parts, but unfortunately all I got was scrap. Sold weapons that I'm not going to use, sold a bunch of hats, and of course all the junk as well. Although, I did remember to not sell the pet rock, so we still have the pet rock. Somewhere. Who does have the pet rock? Where's my pet rock? Oh, I guess it... I think you have to specifically look for junk. Yeah, you have to filter by junk, I guess. Otherwise, it doesn't show up. Yep. Little Rocky Stan. But anyway, I took a look at anything that I could buy here, and it turns out that this FAMAS is fucking awesome. It is so good. Look how it compares to the basic assault rifle. It does basically double the damage. 14 to 21 instead of 6 to 12. The critical damage multiplier is slightly higher. The chance to jam is uh, basically the same as the base weapon, but mine there just happens to be 0% because I have the the sturdy magazine upgrade applied to it. The range is quite a bit higher. The capacity is way bigger, 25 round capacity. The armor penetration is better. And it even has a burst fire mode, which is inefficient as far as ammo goes, I suppose. But if you need a lot of damage really quick, that would be amazing. So, yeah, this thing is light years better than what I have. It's amazing. Also gonna buy a little bit of assault rifle ammo and sniper ammo to tide me over. And I was looking at some of the other stuff and... There's really not too much here that I actually want. 
I looked at this shotgun, the sawed-off shotgun, to see if it was any better than Yulia's pump shotgun, but it really isn't. It does less damage. The basic difference between it and the pump shotgun is just that it holds less ammo. It has a shorter range, but it has a much wider cone angle. So it's more for spraying a large group of people very close up. But it's not worth it. It really doesn't do much damage. I don't like it. And, uh, yeah, there's really not much else to buy. Uh, there's this assault rifle. The M14, which is very, very slightly better than the M1. But it's such a slight upgrade, I really don't think it's worth it. It does one more damage on the minimum and max. Uh, the critical multiplier is much higher, but, eh. Slightly higher range, same armor, armor penetration. It's really not worth it, it's not much of an upgrade. And that's pretty much it. I just wish I could buy as many of these FAMASs as possible, because I want to get three of them. To replace Harper, Theodore, and Angela's assault rifles. Unfortunately, she only seems to have one. I also think I'm going to buy this leather jacket. A little bit more armor. I do want to see if her stock, like, magically refills itself if you go to talk to her again. I seriously doubt it, but... Yeah, it doesn't. So, the question of who to give the FAMAS to is easily solved by realizing that Angela is better than every single person here. Because she's level 14, or 16, now. So, let's give it to her. Harper's the only one with armor at the moment, so let's give the armor to... Hmm... Tire Tread Breastblade. Oh, that's the cos... Yeah, that's the cosmetic thing. Not the the actual armor. Yeah, let's give it to Yulia. Cool. Yeah, so you don't have any level 3 radiation suit. Doesn't appear so. Alright, I think I'm good to go. Go check and just make sure I don't have entrance to the Citadel. I don't believe I do. Um. Oh, never mind. Good to see you, recruits. Uh, apparently I have full access. <sighs> oh my god. One hell of a wigwam you guys got there. The hell's a wigwam? Wait, what was that? You notice he's wearing a humongous double-barreled pistol on his hip. Wait, can I get that from him? Like, I remember when I played this before in the beta, I thought he gave it to me, but I can't remember why. Well, I can't seem to get it. What, not even my cute little puppy is enough to make you want to give me the weapon? Look at his face! He's so cute! Alright, what's inside of here? Oh my god. They even have turrets. This is so cool. I'm probably gonna spend hours in here before I get back topside and get back to adventuring. Captain Hunter. Team Echo, isn't it? Nice to put a face to a name. I'm Captain Hunter, Team Delta. Your team doesn't look like the other teams we've met. That's... Uh, that's B? That's because... Oh, that's... <laughs> they they uh, separate out the B and the cuz. That's because we're different from the other teams you've met. Special Ops. But aren't all Ranger operations special? What makes yours different? Well, let's just say we're the ranger team Vargas calls when other ranger teams get out of line. Alright. I'd like to ask more, but apparently I can't. Goodbye. Zara, Dallas, Duke, and Hunter. Hold on before I go down. What's around here? I bet there's secrets. Secrets. 
A leather-skinned old ranger is arranging knives in a display case, and looking at them fondly. Where? I'm not sure who that was talking about. Is it you? Because you're not looking at a display case, you're just standing, looking at... Actually, you're looking at us, kind of creepily. Yeah, I think it's him. <sighs> Seems like it was only yesterday. Ancient and balding, with his ranger fatigues hanging baggy on his skinny frame, he wears his long gray hair pulled back in a tight ponytail, and his bifocals teeter on the tip of his nose. What a choice to have to make. Wish you'd saved Accenter instead. Nothing I like better than their rutabag... Rutabagus? I don't know what that is. Now I guess they're gone for good. Now, what can old Flintlock do for you today? How'd you get the name Flintlock? The fellas all joke that I've been around so long that the standard issue for a ranger back in my day was a flintlock and a coonskin cap. And, well, they ain't far wrong. I got boots older than General Vargas's daddy. Them some old boots. Did you, um, call us children? <laughs> Everybody's a kid to me. I'm older than dirt. And you, you're just back from your first patrol, ain't you? Well then, guess I can call you what I want. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. What do you think of Vargi? Also, please don't tell him I called him Vargi. Oh wow, he even calls Vargas a kid. Okay. <laughs> He's a good kid, Vargas. Helped us save the world from Finster and base Coach Ice's robot army back in the bad old days. And he's been keeping us safe and strong ever since. Love him like my own son. What was Base Coach Ice? And also, how the hell do you pronounce it? Back before the apocalypse, it was a military facility, and just like this one, only Coach Ice was a robot research center. But then, somehow, about 15 years back, its mainframe had some kind of glitch and it started thinking that humans were the enemy. Can you believe it? The darn thing started pooping out killer robots and sending them off to kill all and sundry. Well, the Rangers had to put a stop to that, didn't they? And so we did. Blew the damn place to kingdom come. Ain't seen a robot since. Well, I hate to inform you, but that's going to be changing now. Who is Finster? Didn't you see his head in the museum? Crazy scientist type. Wanted to kill everybody and replace them with mutants. Started making plagues to wipe us all out. Thank God Vargas and Angie and Thrasher and Hellraiser put him down like the mad dog he was. Anything we can help with? Well, as a matter of fact, I could use your help. The museum is always looking for interesting relics and artifacts from the past to add to our collection. Recovering that kind of stuff was the best thing the crazies who lived here before ever did. Trouble was, all they wanted to was hide it away. We want to show it to people. Let them cogitate on it. <laughs> Maybe figure out what some of it does. Cogitate is interesting. So listen, if you ever come upon if you ever come upon anything interesting while you're on patrol, bring it on back and I'll trade you for what you found. And I won't give you no junk neither. I'll set you up with something good. Ooh. I wonder maybe I shouldn't have sold all the stuff I just sold. Like, would he be interested in a pet rock and a cabbage patch kid? I think I got a quest, didn't I? Yeah, I gather curiosities. Okay, so basically I should, before selling junk, probably come to him first. Let's see. Found anything unusual? Uh, apparently not. I hope I didn't sell, like, really good stuff. Ah, well, whatever. There's plenty of, fi uh, plenty of time to find cool stuff. Yeah, let's see what he's got on display so far. 
Excellent work saving Stubbins Farm, Echo. Thank you. Alright, is that... <laughs> is that a license plate? I wish I could zoom in more. I think it's a license plate. A small square piece of plastic, colored blue, orange, and white. There are raised letters and numbers embossed on it. Most of the numbers have rubbed off, but you can just make out the letters. H. Crusher-esque. Oh, wait. That was a big description for this one. An almost human head. Only the wires sticking out of the neck let you know this was never a living man. With that and the slightly rubbery look to the skin. The clean sever at the bottom of those wires makes you think that this head was removed after the robot had shut down. It also makes you wonder if the electronics inside might be undamaged. Someone good with robotics and programming might be able to learn something from it. Scratched into the science fictional eyepiece is the word Proteus. Hmm. Might be too early to do this, but uh, you want to take a crack at it, Harper? Am I... Hmm, maybe computer science isn't what it needs? Well, it talks about electronics, if the electronics inside might be undamaged. Someone good with robotics and programming. Well, Harper's good at the computer science. He's a level three scientist. Can't seem to do nothing with it, though. Hmm. This case is filled with old timey books, many of which show signs of considerable use. Some of the most bookmarked are. Wretch Like Me by Stephen Heno, The Unabridged Elf Manual by Collins, <laughs> Collins McBrush, and Macaria Carrion, Succubus Queen of Hell by Tom Bryams. You also spot the actually useful Fix It by <laughs> Guy McVer, <laughs> hidden on a bottom shelf. Guy McVer. Gee, I wonder what that could be a reference to. Guy McVer. Okay, fix it. So that would be a mechanical repair manual then. Hmm. Oh, toaster repair skill. This book has tons of useful advice on fixing anything. The chapter on radio repair has been bookmarked. There's a chapter on toaster repair you find fascinating. Hmm. Well, alright, I guess I'll use it on... Uh... Harper. Read that book, Harper. Read it good. Look it over twice. Take your time. Nice. Hmm, a couple more books here in American Life. The Book of Nauseatingly Correct Manners and Maximum Power. But you don't have time for reading now. You make a note to get back to them later. <laughs> Mailbox. How quaint. What the hell is this? Is that a wizard's staff? A gnarled wooden staff with a disturbingly reddish tinge and a crust of dried gore at the business end. Just looking at it fills you with a nameless dread. Alright, a bunch of this stuff is obviously references to things I don't know. Is that a Red Rider BB gun? A Red Rider Carbine Action 200 shot range model air rifle with a compass in the stock and a thing which tells the time. If you're not careful with it, you'll shoot your eye out with it. Ah, the classic of BB guns. You'll shoot your eye out. The hell is this thing? This gun is so big and bulky it has to be mounted on tank treads. Looks like it could pack a wallop. A small placard on the ground reads, Mason Cannon. While the cannon has been dead for years, its parts seem to be in working order. Someone with knowledge of machines and how to repair them might be able to get a little power flowing. Hmm. I believe I gave Vulture's Cry some mechanical repair skills, right? Yeah. Ooh. That's really, really hard.
But if I can do that there, then why can't I use my s computer science on this? Just making sure it's not like some weird skill that I didn't think of to use. Is that one of the old vault computers? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> kind of looks like one, though. Wasteland Snake. WASD, find water. It's made by Vargas? Alright, let's go. Find water. Oh. Game over. Your life has ended in the wasteland. Score, zero. <clears throat> let's try again. God, I didn't even have time to do anything. Jesus. Okay, so on the snake, I'm trying to find water. How long can I go for? Little pockets of radiation everywhere. I'm actually going to play this. Hmm, the controls are kind of laggy. God damn it, Vargas, why didn't you program this better? You incompetent bastard. Alright, fuck it. <laughs> Snake never has been and never will be a fun game. Nope. What do you bet something happens if you get like a super high score? What the hell is this thing? Oh, it's a statue. Skill points. The statue shows the back of a head with three tentacles instead of a body, each gripping a stiletto knife. The opposite side of the head shows the same. A plaque at the base reads, A ranger in the year of who the fuck cares, Eric Tideman. Okay. Cool. Something to spend my skill points on, yeah. Harper's got four. Mm, lock picking or computer science? Honestly, I feel like lockpicking is something that comes up a lot more than computer science. Yep, you got four. Hmm. Frankly, she already has a really good chance to hit. I don't know if I really need even a better chance to hit. Eh, what the hell. I'll take it. <laughs> Why not? Good. Looks like a clock and a box of tissues. And then whatever this... Oh, that's a... Uh, a jukebox, isn't it? Or something like that. I think so. A <laughs> phone booth. More license plates? Or are those keycards? I don't know. A plastic card with a black stripe on one side. And the words Sector Pass 7 written on the other. It's been... It's seen a lot of wear and tear. Wait, this is Visa. Is that a credit card? A, a comically oversized credit card made big enough so that I can see it with my camera that is rather zoomed out? Oh, can I use my toaster repair skill? <laughs> this, thing is, this thing is actively sparking. Like, where's it getting the power from? Who the hell would plug this thing in? Crazy bastard. This toaster is in need of repairs. Alright. Go, Harper. Wait. Where's this? Oh, do I have to do I have to add it? I do have to add it. That's weird. Ooh. It is impossible. <laughs> this is probably like the hardest toaster to repair in the entire game. So wait, hold on. Let's see what level this thing is. Or at least roughly. So at level one. Okay, so this toaster is at least level 4 or above. And they go all the way up to level 10. So 
Somehow, the Rangers have managed to keep an intact M388 Davy Crockett tactical nuke in perfect shape for the last 150 years. Every part, wire, and actuator looks to be in working order. Hmm. Do you think the warhead is live too? I don't know, but apparently I can start a conversation with it, so let's do that. A bright red button blinks silently on the control panel below the launching mechanism. Um... <laughs> oh, I wonder if this button still works. Detonation initiated. Have a nice day. Well, that was unfortunate. The nuke you set off in Flintlock's library may have been small, but it was enough to kill everyone inside Ranger Citadel, thus ending the Desert Rangers as an institution and a force for stability in the wastes. Still, another group might have stepped up and be become the next guardians of civilization and protectors of the downtrodden, except for the fact that three weeks later, an army of synths and mechanically enhanced humans from California invaded Arizona and killed everyone who did not immediately swear fealty to their leader, the synthetic messiah, Matthias. Oops. Well. Game's over. Thanks everyone for watching. Is it actually showing the credits? <laughs> it's the end of the game. <laughs> That's awesome. That's exactly... Like, I mean, what would you think would happen? And I know that everybody tried it. Everybody pressed that button. Because, I mean, come on. You gots to. All quiet? Yep. Ah, oh, got one injured. Fire Grenadier Stephen Krell. Goddamn pills don't do <coughs> shit. Tideman. Tideman. Didn't somebody just mention your name? This man must be the ranger's doctor, uh, judging by the tools he's carrying around. He walks around the room tending to his patients. Wait, tending to his patients, but he only has one. Anyway, but frequently stops to catch his breath. You can see tattoos running along his neck and arms, though you can only catch a glimpse of the latter when he reaches up to cover his mouth during a coughing fit. Huh? Oh, new... <laughs> recruits. He's obviously sick. Hurt? Need supplies, or just snooping? Eh, just looking around. Well, don't. Stay out till you're sick. No <coughs> looky-loos. Uh, yes, we need to be fixed up. Help us. <gasps> thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, you're taking pills, Doc? What's it to you? Can a sick man take <laughs> pills? Well, what's wrong with you? Anything we can do to help? Not unless you've got a cure for <laughs> lung cancer on you. <laughs> oh, oh god, <laughs> that doesn't look good. Uh, no, I, I don't, I'm sorry. Sorry to say. Before the apocalypse, I could have had chemo. Uh, therapy. L l a trial? Healing crystals, now all I can do is take pain pills and wait for the end. Shit. The fucking pills aren't working anymore. Hmm. Well, I found some strange thing in the w strange things in the waste. I wouldn't be surprised if I found a cure for cancer. Hmm, what if we found a cure? <laughs> what a comedian. There is no cure. Not for 150 goddamn years. Not unless you believe those crackpots who say that Finster found one before he died. Hmm? Finster? Mad scientist. Lived in a place called Darwin's Village. <laughs> Darwin's Village. 
uh, was working on modifying humans for hostile environments. But there are rumors that he invented a lot of diseases and, and cures, too. Bullshit, of course. And even if it wasn't, Darwin <laughs> Village doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. Where was it? North of here, somewhere. Ask Sagara, but it's gone. The rangers leveled it, then radiation ate it. Nothing left. Hmm. Sounds like I might need a strong radiation suit to go there. What's Sergeant Sagara like? Thrasher, our map guy, in the library, keeps track of where things are, and where they used to be. Alright, would you take pain pills if we found them? Hell yes. Anything, everything. I'll trade you double for any you find. Okay, have I found any? I'm not sure if I've actually found any pain pills. Alright, what do you got? Any damn thing you could ever need. Removes all disease effects, nice. <laughs> Stuffed miniature dog. <laughs> that adds one to leadership, ooh. That'd be damn good for Theodore. Okay, I don't think I need any of these medical supplies. Do I have any painkillers? I don't believe so. Ooh, pain relievers. I think I had those left over from the beginning of the game. There's some more. All right, cool. Thanks, Rangers. I needed that. If you find more, bring them over. You got it. All right, let me take a look what Theodore has currently for his trinket. Okay, he doesn't actually have a trinket. In that case, I'm definitely buying that leadership increasing thing. Yoink. Doggy. Oops. Wait, what? I'm literally dying here, and you're joking with me. Huh? What do you, what do you mean? I just bought something. What are you talking about? Excellent. Crafted with love and care, this taxidermy dog commemorates 12 years on four legs. Stuffed, he looks like a small, proud soldier, closing his eyes, looking slightly up. I've got to be honest, that image just looks like a blob to me. Like, I can't even see where his face is. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I see those are two feet, but... That does not look like a dog to me. It just looks like a, a blob. A blob of fur. Alright, I think I got a quest. Yep, help Dr. Tideman find a cure for cancer. Should ask cartographer Cigar about the location of Darwin's village. Ah, so many cool things to find in here. Oh, there you are. Thrasher Cigara. Never cared much for Highpool, but saving them and helping Kate Preston was a wise choice. They've been in danger of joining the Red Scorpions for a while now. You've ended that threat. Well, thank you. Hmm? If that was Blythe, this must have been Parker? Which makes this... What the hell are you talking about, Thrasher? Alright, wasn't Thrasher one of the original dudes from the first Wasteland game? I think he was. Hold on a second. Take a look at these books. Charts and maps and topographical surveys that may as well be in Venusian. Uh, a few interesting titles stick out. <laughs> that image he's, in, image he's in his robes and drinking coffee with a cigar. Looking business casual, I guess. There's no getting around it. Despite the bathrobe and slippers and the high-tech artificial leg, 
this guy is intimidating. Fat, yes, but there's a lot of muscle under all that padding. And he's six if he's an inch. Also, his fists are the size of canned hams. Yeah, I know. You're the new recruits. Heroes of Highpool, etc. Well, I don't do the tour. Flintlock does the tour. I just do maps. So, unless you've got questions about maps, talk to him. Thanks. A lot of questions. Oh yeah, uh, there is a tour. Every time Vargas brings new recruits to the Citadel, they always want us to show them around the museum. Well, I don't have time for it. You never pay any attention anyway. So, <laughs> like, what's so interesting about maps? They're stupid. Keeping accurate maps is an important part of a ranger's job. Knowing locations and distances to towns, oases, and resources keeps our communities alive. We also need to put new places on the map when we find them, to catalog who lives there and if they're a threat. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be getting back to it. So, we should keep an eye out for new places? We're always looking to expand our knowledge of the world. Write down all the places you visit on your travels, and when you come back to base, I'll reward you for any place we don't already have on our maps. The more the better. Hmm. Yeah, I should go exploring at some point. Just go out and just look for stuff. Oases are important? <laughs> That's a dumb question. It's like, hmm, are finding places to restore your water so you don't die in the desert, is that important? Uh, yeah. There aren't many places to find drinkable water out in the desert, so we try to keep the maps current about which are pure and which have run dry. And no, I'm not giving you a map. Part of becoming a ranger is finding water for yourself. We had to do it in my day. You'll do it in yours. Okay, so you... You make maps and then you don't share them with the people that need them. Sounds reasonable. Do you and Flintlock get along? His incessant chatter can be wearing, but I'm glad he's here. He acts as a shield for the idiots who would otherwise bother me. Where'd you get that cool artificial leg? If you ask about it again, I'll tear it off and beat you with it. Okay. I take it there's some history. I'm guessing when you're at base Kachais, like your leg got cut off and they started to transform you into a, a thing or, or something. Oh god, I can keep asking about it. Uh, let's ask about that last. How do you feel about Vargas? That's General Vargas to you. A wild man back when we patrolled together. Now he's too cautious for his own good. Or the Rangers. How do you mean, too cautious? We lost a lot of men taking this place. And I understand him wanting to regroup and rebuild. But it's been 15 years. While we've been sitting here guarding our little patch, the weeds have been growing beyond our borders, and every year we let them go. They're going to be harder to cut back when, when the time comes. Yeah, speaking of that, what exactly are our borders? Look at this map. This is Ranger Citadel. Our territory stretches from Rail Nomads, here in the north, to Ag Center in the south, and High Pool in the east. That's it. Everything outside that triangle has become terra incognita. Our influence is shrinking when it should be expanding. Yeah, wow, that's actually not very big at all. I've already pretty much exhausted the, uh, the ranger's territory. Hmm. Alright, uh, not much of a point asking about Accent or Hypo, I've already been there, but... Tell me about the Rail Nomad Camp. A little town built up out of rail cars. Always fighting amongst themselves, but... They don't generally bother anybody else. A bit of a drug problem, though. I wish they would end their conflict. Every time one of them gets the upper hand, I have to change my maps. <laughs> uh, just to make sure he doesn't have anything particularly interesting to say about these other places, let me just check... Yep, I can know that. 
Mm, we get our water from them in exchange for patrolling up there. Good thing you saved it. Okay. Ag Center. Research facility. Yep, yep, yep. Now it's gone thanks to you and we'll probably all starve. Wait, what do you mean it's gone thanks to me? No, it's gone thanks to the fucker that freaking sabotaged the place. The fucker that, might I add, I blew up. Weeds. Raiders, militias, mutant animals, mad scientists, cults. We keep our own backyard clean, but beyond it, the wasteland is worse than it ever was. And there are places out there that haven't been updated on my maps since we got here. So, you're proud to be a ranger? If the rangers didn't exist, I would have joined some scavenger gang and been dead before I was 30. I may have lost a leg in my service here, but I found my mind. I call that a bargain. The best I ever had. Fair enough. Tell me about Darwin's village. Darwin, not Darwin's. Darwin doesn't own it. Well, nobody does, since the radiation overwhelmed it. It's abandoned. I'll mark the spot it used to be on your map. Oh my. That's pretty far out there. It looks like if I got to Rail Nomad's camp, though, I could probably just go straight there. It doesn't look like there's anything blocking it. Enjoy the hike. Oh, I'm sure I will. Thanks. I think I'm going to need better, uh, better radiation suits before I try to tackle that. Okay. <clears throat> Come on. What if one of us loses a limb? You're going to keep a fix like this to yourself? <sighs> You're right. I'm being selfish. I got it from a woman named Dr. Kyle. Don't know where she came from, but she did excellent work. It's not for the squeamish, though. The new leg is fine. Works like a charm, but it's powered by a fuel cell that's implanted in the chest. Kind of freaks me out, to be honest. Dude, that's awesome. That sounds like Iron Man. What's freaky about it? It's like a little blue gem set into my breastbone. First few nights, I had to... I had it. The glow kept me awake. It just feels... unnatural. Sounds pretty badass to me. That's an awkward note to end the conversation on, but, uh, <clears throat> goodbye. Alright, go back to drawing in your robes. So, uh, tour? Can you give us a tour? You want the tour? Terrific! Uh, most of the fellas run screaming when I start talking about the old days. Great to have an appreciative audience. This is going to be hard to read. It's a strange one. There's a lot of those little cards around, all completely worthless. But this one meant so much to a guy that he paid the rangers who brought it to him in more gear than you could shake a stick at. Never found out what he wanted it for, but when he died, we decided to retrieve it and preserve it. Bizarre how one little piece of plastic got us so much loot. That's the head of one of the desert ranger's greatest enemies, Erwin John Finster. He was one of the mad scientists. Tried to make people into mutants or some such. I can't recall the details. All I know is, he was so mad he turned himself into an android. Didn't help him when the rangers caught up with him. Lost his head over it, in fact. <laughs> kind of spooky the way his eyes follow you around the room, ain't it? There's a lot of fake blood staffs lying around, but this is the real one, I promise you. We took it off the corpse of the blood priest himself. Nobody knows exactly what its purpose is or what it does. The secrets of its origins are lost in the, midst of, in the mists of time. Uh, that and we lost the manual. Not our finest moment, this one. A team of rangers in Highpool ended up killing a kid in self-defense when he started taking pot shots at them with a gun. Some vigilante named Red Rider came after the team when he heard about the killing. Bent on vengeance. Had to kill him too. This is his gun. Isn't she a beauty? Top of the line, and the heaviest hitter of her day. Not operational now, I'm afraid. Can't find any replacement parts, but I still polish her muzzle every day. Now that is a useful piece of plastic. It got us through the final doors in Sleeper Base 1. Well worth the hours of fighting it took us to get it. 
Not much to look at, is it? But you would not believe what we found inside it. Always check broken toasters, children. They're like slot machines. Sometimes you get nothing. Sometimes, jackpot. And that's it. Hmm, he didn't talk about the nuke here that you can explode with a single press of a button. Alright, so I think that's it for up here. Obviously there's a lot more to this place though, probably just as much stuff on the opposite side here. And this episode is already over an hour. I better stop it here. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed with how much detail this game has. I mean, in all likelihood, I'm probably going to spend over an hour just in the ranger base. Not, not even killing anything or getting into any combat or something like that, but just uh, talking to the people and learning more about the, the wasteland and the territories we own and the different conflicts and everybody's different stories and gathering quests and whatnot. Looking at cool books. Like, there's just so much stuff. It's so cool. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.